Praise the Lord. Welcome to those of you who are joining in. Thank you to those who are on TikTok. Welcome. We are going to start any minute from now. We're just waiting for Facebook to come on board and YouTube. Please, let's make sure we are inviting. We are sharing on our groups, our timelines, our WhatsApp groups as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, Josephine. Please announce where you're tuning in from. Let's share the TikTok um, broadcast as well on the WhatsApp group, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to everybody who's joining in. Let's wait for a few more people. Please let me know where you are tuning in from. Mamudise, we see you. Sis Josephine, we see you. Sis Ribs, we see you as well. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration, O oh God. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this sharing and fellowship. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to speak to us. You're going to speak to our lives. You're going to speak to our needs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for productive prayer. Thank you for answered prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Awesome. Okay, not to keep you any minute longer, thank you so much for everyone who is tuning in from Facebook and YouTube. My name is Pastor Fortune Lafabe. Thank you so much for allowing me the privilege to join you and to fellowship with you tonight as we share the word of God together. So tonight we're going to be talking about productive prayer. I hope you did not miss last night. It was electrifying and very, very, very awesome. So if you missed last night's broadcast, please make sure that you are um, uh, revisiting visiting our YouTube channel. Hallelujah. My YouTube handle is a fortune L online, or you can uh, visit Apostle Mara's channel. If you're from TikTok, you just type the same name and you will end up at the same place and you will see the broadcast from last night. Amen. So tonight, as I said, we are talking about components of productive prayer. What is a component? A component is a mechanism. It's a working. How does productive prayer work? How do we ensure that we are going to have results of productive prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. How do we guarantee that we are going to have productive prayer, prayer that produces results? Let me kick off with a scripture from Jeremiah. Let me get an indication just before I start. Perhaps um, those of you who are on um, YouTube and Facebook, are you able to see me? Hallelujah. Are you able to see me? I'm sure that by now my face should be showing on the screen. Hallelujah. Whoa. Glory to the living God. Hallelujah. If somebody can confirm for me, even if you are on TikTok, if you are also seeing the screen on YouTube as well, if you can confirm for me, because I want to get going. Hallelujah. But as I said, um, the word of God says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, it says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you, I will even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined. I will show you things that have been hidden, which you do not know and understand and which you cannot distinguish. Hallelujah. Come to me. Hallelujah. I will show you hidden things. Hallelujah. I just want to make sure that um, everybody is seeing me on YouTube because I'm yet to see. Um, can you hear me? I see Apostle is tuning in from Guiana. Thank you so much. Components of productive prayer. Okay. You see me. Okay. So it's just that it's static on my side. Okay. I understand now. Okay. If you can see my face, then it's okay. Then I continue. So there is a, there, there is a word that God says to us. He says, if you call to him, he will answer you. So there is a guaranteed point where God answers prayer. Hallelujah. He says, when you are calling me, when you pick up the phone and you call me, when you call me, wherever you are standing, I will Will answer you and I will show you the hidden things that you are looking for. I will I will answer and give you the solutions that you are seeking from me. So tonight the objective for our teaching is as follows. We need to understand what are the components of productive prayer. What are the components for effective prayer? How do you know that your prayer is working? How do you know that your prayer is effective? God promise, uh, promises us to answer. He promises to answer us when we call on him. Hallelujah. As we have shared in the scripture in Jeremiah 30, he says, so he needs to give you the assurance that you serve a God of answered prayer, a God that answers prayers. Hallelujah. So there are certain products or there are certain components that follow prayers or, or people that call on God. Hallelujah. There are certain uh, products or, or things that are produced when they are followed up with action. When you act on the things that 
that God says you must act on. He gives you certain products. Hallelujah. If, if you look at our governmental system, it works within components. There are systems and components. Hallelujah. If you look at government, there's an executive arm, there's a legislative arm, there's a functional component of everything. There's a judiciary, there's the military, there is a civil service, there is um, uh, also private sector. All these components work together. Hallelujah. All these components work together. So effectively even in the body of christ in the things of god in christianity there is components that work together hallelujah and he guarantees you he says prayer will produce results hallelujah for as long as the components are functional amen somebody let us look at the book of James, chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. The Bible says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Confess your sins to one another. Confess your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. You may be healed and restored. And he says, the heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, can accomplish much. The heartfelt, persistent prayer, people who don't give up, those are the actions that he's talking about. He says, if you take certain actions, those heartfelt, persistent prayers, where you are not giving up those heartfelt persistent prayers confirm to god that you believe in him that he's going to deliver what you what you're asking him for he says they will accomplish very much they will produce functional components anytime your prayers don't produce results anytime you don't see the results you're expecting from god you should ask yourself whether you are taking the right actions hallelujah so we are going to look at the different components tonight and we are going to look at how how we can guarantee that we we get those answered results Hallelujah. He says that kind of prayer of a, of a righteous man, it is persistent. Hallelujah. It accomplishes very much. It is dynamic. It has tremendous power. Hallelujah. So tonight, our desire and our prayer is that God, we need to see the tremendous power that will be availed. Hallelujah. The Bible also says Elijah was a man of a like nature like ours with the same physical and mental and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. And he prayed earnestly and intensely for it not to rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again and the sky gave rain and the land produced its crops. Hallelujah. Who like Elijah? Who wants to pray like Elijah to be guaranteed that you would, you would have such a prayer that produces results that you would say certain things with your mouth and, and declare that there was not going to be rain and suddenly there is no rain. Hallelujah. Can you speak certain things and you see them coming to pass? Hallelujah. The authority that comes from a man like that. Hallelujah. And the Bible encourages us, it says, Elijah was just like me and you. He was a man of like passions. He was a man of, set, of, of, of the same limitations. But when he spoke, he spoke with power. And when he spoke, things happened. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, things are going to happen. You are going to have productive prayer from tonight. Hallelujah. You are going to have productive prayer. Hallelujah. The first thing that is a component of productive prayer is that we need to have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Number one, if you're taking notes, you need to have a relationship with God. Matthew chapter six, verse nine says, pray then in this way, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He wants you to recognize him as your father. He says, I am Abba, Father. You need to have a relationship with him. A relationship is a bedrock of every communication. So it means you need to be regularly communing with him. You need to communicate with him. That is why we need prayer. Hallelujah. Communication stands on relationship. Without the one, there is no other. Communication happens because there is a relationship. You cannot communicate to somebody that you don't know or you don't have a relationship with, that you are not flowing with, that you are not connecting with. The second thing about the relationship with God is that relationship is the basis and the strength of request. The problem that we are finding, saints, is that we are coming to God with so many requests. There are people who are calling themselves Christians, but they're not even Christians because all they know is to do a request. They were told that you get born again and you get you, you get to know uh, a certain, uh, you know, there's a God somewhere and you just go to him and you ask him for things and he just writes out a check. Hallelujah. Not so. Whenever requests are made outside your relationship with God, that process is called begging. It's not prayer. Anytime you find yourself begging, you are not in prayer. You are not in productive prayer. The components of a functional and productive prayer do not exist. He doesn't call us to be beggars. He calls us to have a relationship with him. He, it is not a transaction of just doing requests, requests, requests. If you want to know whether your, your prayers are going to be answered, hallelujah, it is based on relationship. 
Hallelujah. Outside of that relationship, it is begging. It is no longer prayer. So prayer is not a place for begging. Hallelujah. Number three, prayer is the platform for relationship-based requests. If you think about this and, and, and you look at a, your child when they make requests, hallelujah, if they, if they have not communicated or, or somebody who, who, who pretends to love you and they just come and make requests, you are not going to give them the things that they're asking for. Hallelujah. So let's look at the scriptural examples of people who, who, who had productive prayer. Their lives were based on productive prayer. Let's look at the life of Abraham. Hallelujah. Genesis 18 verses 17 to 19. The Bible says, the Lord said, shall I keep a secret from Abraham, my friend and servant? This is how God related to Abraham. He says, shall I keep a secret from Abraham? He's my friend. He's my servant. What am I going to do since Abraham is destined to become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him? For I have known and chosen him and I've acknowledged him as my own, that he may teach and command his children, the sons of his household after him to keep the ways of the Lord by doing what is righteous and just so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has promised him. Amen, somebody. So we now see that Abraham approached God not for the things but he approached him for fellowship. So whenever you want productive prayer, you want to see the components that are functional in productive prayer. He wants you to have fellowship with him. He doesn't want you to just issue requests. This is not the kind of message I appreciate that people will be excited about because it's not a message that they say, God, we are coming to you. I'm believing you for a house. I'm, I'm taking hold of my keys for the house and all these things and cars and all these things. But is, tonight, my appeal is that we should have a relationship with God. Do you have proper fellowship with him? Hallelujah. Throughout scripture, Abraham was referred to as a friend of God. Do, are you now at the level, are you pursuing the level where you will be considered the friend of God? Hallelujah. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of the land before your people in Israel? Hallelujah. And give it forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham. The functional components of a productive prayer that everything that came out all the possessions that resulted, hallelujah, were given to the descendants of Abraham. The blessings were given to the descendants of Abraham by virtue of friendship that he had with God. Hallelujah. He says in Isaiah 41 verse 8, he says, But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of my friend Abraham. So Jacob benefited by virtue of the relationship that God had with Abraham. Hallelujah. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God and this faith was credited to him as righteousness, as conformity to his will. And he was called the friend of God. James 2, 23. Hallelujah. Abraham, the, the, the scripture was fulfilled that Abraham believed in God. His belief in God was based on a relationship. So your foundation needs to be a foundation of relationship. Another example that we find in scripture is the example of Elijah. Elijah had a standing relationship with God that had nothing to do with requests. Hallelujah. Are, are, are we communicating tonight? Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Hallelujah. We need to have a relationship with God. We need a rewiring of our mindset that we need to be in relationship, in fellowship. When we fellowship with him, when we have a relationship, a solid foundation with him, when we are not seeking him just for the things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. First Kings 17, 1 says, Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was, the set, who was one of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall neither be dew or rain in the years, and, except by my word. And we see that it came to pass. He says, except by my word, there was not going to be rain. There was power in his utterance. So from tonight, your prayer should be, God, give my utterances power. Give my utterance, anoint my words. When I speak, things must come to pass. Let me have the same audacity like Elijah. There was power in his utterance. It was reiterated in the scripture that I read in the book of James chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. Verse 17 says, Elijah, being like me and you, he spoke these things and he shook the heavens. Production, pro it, it produced effective things that he was praying for. Hallelujah. The third example that we see of a man that prayed productive prayer was the life of David. Hallelujah. David was known in scripture as the man after God's own heart. 
where you see that he had a strong relationship with God. Hallelujah. Everything that David did was confirmed by God. First Samuel 13, 14 says, but now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man, David, after his own heart, and the Lord has appointed him as leader and ruler over his people because you have not kept obeyed what the Lord commanded you. God had to dismantle somebody and remove somebody from a position of power to put David there. So if you are, are having that, even that request in your heart tonight, there are some people who are saying, there are people in my workplace that are not even qualified to hold the positions that they are supposed to have hold. I'm supposed to be in that position. What is your basis to want to be, to that person to be re replaced? It is your relationship with God. When you are in relationship with God, God moves the people who are not supposed to be in certain positions. I want you to pray tonight and say, God, remove those who are occupying my position. That person who is occupying that promotion or who is holding back your promotion, how do you achieve that? It is when you are in relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts 13 verses 22, he says, and when he had removed him, he raised up David to become king. He will raise you up similarly. Hallelujah. You will also be raised similarly. He says he raised David up to become king of him. He testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Conf when he says you are, con you are men after my own heart, it means you conform to my will. You conform to the purposes of God. You are not on your own renegade. You are not, you, you are not rebellious. You are not doing your own thing the way you want it, but you conform to the will of God. You conform to the purposes that he has laid out for you. You are not trying to write a certain script for yourself. Hallelujah. You are following the template. You are following the, 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 the blueprint of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at how David prayed so that we can also have the similar results. The Bible says in Psalms 40 verse 1 to 3, Psalm chapter 40, verse 1 to 3 says, I waited patiently and I waited expectantly on the Lord. What kind of prayer do you do? Do you wait patiently on God? Sometimes we issue God, you know, uh, with prayer requests and so forth. And, and so forth. We, 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 we like in a microwave Christianity and a microwave mode. We just want things to happen. We don't have patience. And when we don't have patience, we fall apart. We waited patiently and expectant for the Lord, and he inclined to us and heard our cries. That is how David prayed. He says, I waited patiently and expectantly. I expected to see results. Some of us pray, but we don't really expect yeah. to see the results. We are just talking for the sake of talking, thinking that, you know, because we have said it, it will just come to pass. But if you don't have it in your heart, if it is not birthed inside of you, if you have not conceived that thing that you are, that is why those who wait on the Lord, you know, if you are expectant, you will, you will receive. But if you are not expecting anything, that is why you don't see results because you prayed, but it was just mere words. They, they don't come from a point of conception. They don't come from a, a, a baby that is inside of you. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. So David, when he prayed, he always reminded himself and he always made sure that when he prays, God, he reminds God, he says, God, I know you took me from nowhere. I know you took me out of a horrible pit, out of destruction, out of a, a tumultuous life that was just falling apart. You took me out from a miry clay. I was a nobody, God. You made me into somebody. So let me not forget and think I'm somebody today. But let me remember where you took me from. Hallelujah. A man like David, if we pray like David, we have the productive prayer results. Hallelujah. That you know that your promotion is through God. It is God that gave you that promotion. It is God that gave you that job. It is God that gave you that husband. So when you now begin to slack and you say, I'm not going to do the things that put me in, the, in, in that place, that, that place of, of rulership, what will happen? When it falls apart, that is when people will laugh at you. Because you have, you have forsaken your first love. Hallelujah, somebody. When you forsake your first love and you forsake your way of fellowship, the way you did it, you forsake the way you prayed and the zeal with which you prayed. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. That means God gave you a solid foundation. It is not a shakable foundation. If you're going to fall, fall on the rock that will give you a foundation that is certain, that will back you up. You bounce up again. 
He set my feet upon the rock. Hallelujah. He made sure that he steadied my footsteps. Your footsteps must be steadied. You don't shake. You don't doubt. You know that God is going to pull through for you. You know that you serve a living God. You know that the God that you are evangelizing and you are, you, are, you are winning souls for is the God that produces results. You know that when you pray for people that you are expecting a result that prayer is going to be answered. Hallelujah. These days we have Christians that take on, they'll say, oh, uh, they say, pray for me and say, okay, I'll pray for you. You don't know whether the person has prayed for you or not, but then you, you know, you are praying, but you're not even expecting any results. You're not expecting the person to be healed. Hallelujah. Per adventure, you are praying for healing. But David demonstrates for us, he says, he, 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 he steadied my footsteps he, he, because David could see that you could shake easily, you could trip easily, you could miss your path. That is why he says, he orders my steps. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. He establishes my path. When a path is established by God, you don't shake because men cannot shake you. Men cannot move you from a path that is established. If it is God that is establishing that path, then you will stand. A few weeks ago, I taught a message that says, if you are going to go up by man's doing, if you are going to sleep your way up to rule, if you are going to sleep your way up to, 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 to achieve certain things or you do shady things to achieve certain things in life, you cannot sustain it back the same way that you, 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 you employ the, those similar ways. But when God has established your path, you walk solidly without shaking. You walk solidly without wavering. Hallelujah. Yesterday, he sets your foot upon a rock. Hallelujah. He establishes your footsteps. He establishes your path. He puts a new song in your mouth. He says, he put a new song in my mouth. Whenever sadness overwhelms you, you remember that God puts a new song. God, give me a new song. Receive your new song tonight. Hallelujah. I declare and I decree that you will receive your new song tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Many will see and fear and reverence the Lord and will trust confidently in the Lord by virtue of you having followed this template. If you follow this template of prayer, hallelujah, many will serve and trust confidently in the Lord. Hallelujah. He will put a new song in your mouth tonight. Psalm 55 verse 17 says, evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry until he hears my voice. Hallelujah. You will pray and cry in, in the morning, in the noon. Sometimes people, when you know, when you call for prayer and you are saying we are getting together online to, for prayer, they will say, ah, must we pray? Did we kill Jesus? Yeah. Why are we praying so often? Yes, pray in the morning, the noon, because you don't know which time frame he's going to hear your cries. Hallelujah. He's a God. He's a God that is nurturing enough to know the cries of his children. Hallelujah. God must get used to your voice. You must not be a stranger to him. You must not show up only when you are coming with a list of requests. Hallelujah. The example of Daniel. Daniel was a man that was called greatly beloved of the Lord. Hallelujah. Not by virtue of the request that Daniel was making, but by virtue of the relationship that he had. This is the fourth example. Daniel shows us. Hallelujah. It says at the beginning of the supplications, Daniel chapter nine, verses 23, at the beginning of supplications, the command to give you an answer was issued. And I have come to tell you for you are highly regarded and greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the message and begin to understand the meaning of the vision. Hallelujah. He was told that you have found favor with God. You are beloved in God. And because of that, he, you've got his audience. He, he's hearing you clearly. You are greatly loved. So he's got, you've got the audience. He's going to listen to you. Sometimes we need to ensure saints, that we don't sound like empty gongs. You're just a gong. Because every time you come, you know, some people, when, when you say, okay, can we do a prayer of worship? Can you worship God? All they know how to do is God. God, I thank you. I'm believing you for a, a, car, a house and all these things. But tonight I'm saying, let us just dare to just come before God and say, Lord, we just want to seek your face. We just want to seek your face. Before we ask for your hand, we just want to seek your face. Hallelujah. Daniel was comforted. Then behold, the hand touched me and set me unsteadily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And set me unsteadily on my hands and knees. So he said to me, Oh, Daniel, you highly regarded and greatly beloved man, understand the words that I'm about to say to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. And while he was saying this word to me, I stood up trembling. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is Daniel 10.10. 10. Daniel 10, 19 says, he said, oh man, highly regarded and greatly beloved, do not be afraid. Peace be to you. Take courage and be strong. Now, when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. 
Hallelujah. The Lord will speak to you. Hallelujah. The Lord will give you productive answers to your productive prayers. The Lord will strengthen you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I wish I had believers who could type a believing amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He continued to get down on his knees. This was a man who did not take advantage of saying, God is say, has called me beloved and greatly loved. He, he, he knew he had the favor of God, but he still continued to get down on his knees because Daniel 6.10 tells me that he prayed three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God as he had been doing previously. Don't get to the moment where you think that you have received the goods and you think that, okay, God has now answered your physical needs. Now you're not going to do the things that you were doing before or praying the way you were before before take the example of daniel continue praying hallelujah as you had been doing previously so what is my counsel tonight my counsel to you is as follows firstly that you need to determine to develop a strong and vibrant relationship with god De develop a strong and vibrant relationship with god this should be your determination Hallelujah. Isaiah 65, 20 says, it shall also come to pass that before they call, I will answer them. While they are speaking, I will hear. Get to that moment of that audacity. You say, before I call, God has answered. Before he has answered, before, while I'm still speaking, I will hear. He's already heard. He's already executing. He's already sending angels to do what is required. Let your relationship with God precede your request. Let your relationship with God be the foundation when you say, hallowed be your name. I am on a prayer point. One single prayer point hallowed be your name lord our father who art in heaven my father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name sit on that prayer point for tonight don't go anywhere else I'm just here to say, holy, holy are you, Lord. I'm just to give you a hallelujah. I'm just here to say, holy are you, Lord. Hallowed be your name. Thank you, Jane. Hallelujah. Don't allow God to hear only from you when you are having requests or when you are having a need. Have you ever seen somebody, if you are in a relationship with somebody who comes to you only when they have needs, you feel used, you don't feel loved because it's like they only come when they want, they, they want something. Hallelujah. Don't let God hear your voice only when you are in trouble. Hallelujah. Let God recognize your voice where in ordinary times, just an ordinary time. God, I just woke up to say, I love you. God, I just woke up to worship you tonight. I didn't come with you to you with, with, with a whole long list of, of, of stress and troubles. Let God recognize your voice just in ordinary, ordinary prayer, ordinary times. That he can respond to your voice whenever, when you, when you now get to a point where you are having an unusual time from your ordinary time, your unusual time is your challenging time, your trouble time, your problem times. When you come in the moment of trouble, he already knows your voice and he acts very fast. He says, this one, this one praises me in advance. This one talks to me at any given time. Hallelujah. Thank you for those who are following. Hallelujah. Please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube as well. Hallelujah. And click the like button. Hallelujah. Let God recognize your voice in ordinary times so that when the unusual times rise against you, he's able to hear your voice very speedily. Hallelujah. Challenging times will come. Confrontational times will come. Wrestling times will come. And God will recognize your voice. Talk to me, somebody. Come to him once with your problems, now and again. Hallelujah. So that God knows you, that you love him for himself. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Before, while they are still speaking, I will hear. I will handle things and answer their questions in advance, even if they have not asked for them. He knows. Even if you have not asked for that thing, he knows. Pray in this way. This is your prayer point tonight. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. The second point, let me quickly wrap up. Take time to seek his face. Take time to seek the Lord's face, not just his hand. Don't just seek the Lord's hand. When you seek his face, he will show you his hand. Yeah. When you seek his face, he will definitely release to you his hand. The Bible says in, in Psalm 103 verse 7, he says, He made known his ways of righteousness and justice to Moses, his ex, to the children of Israel. If you want God to show you his ways, if you want God to act and to show you and, and act on your behalf, hallelujah. You seek his face. That was the prayer of Moses. He says, Moses says, God, show me your face. Show me your glory. Because when you see his face, glory will be released. There is no way you can be in the presence of God and glory is not released. This was the prayer of Moses because he knew 
that God, he has made known his ways, his ways of righteousness, his ways of justice, his ways of faithfulness, his ways of being a loyal God. His acts towards his children when he's rescued them from the Egyptians time and time again. God has proved himself. God has been giving you evidence that he exists in your life. Stop making as if and renouncing him as if he doesn't exist. Ask him tonight and say, God, show me your face. Show me your glory. Take time to pray to God. You know, ask him just for his face. Just for tonight, let's not ask him for husbands and, 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 and girlfriends and boyfriends. Let's not ask him for cars and houses. Let's just say, God, show me your face. Make yourself visible in my life. For tonight, we know that if he shows his face, if he shows you his glory, witchcraft is taken care of. Demons are taken care of. God, show me your face. If I can see your face, I know that no demon can conquer. If I can see your face, no witch, witch no wizard can conquer. Show me your face. Somebody type it in the, in the comment section. Lord, show me your face. Lord, show me your face. It's Philippians 3.10 says, and this so that I may know him. I may know him. Lord, tonight we are asking that we just want to know you. Become, we, we, we want to become thoroughly acquainted with you. We want to understand your remarkable wonders of the personality that you are. We want to know you completely. Talk to me. Lord, show me your face tonight. And so we, let, let God show you his face. Hallelujah. Brenda, let God show you his face. Hallelujah. So God, tonight we come to you, Lord. We humble ourselves. We are asking you that we want to be acquainted with you. For us who have fallen out of, of, of the path, the right path with you, we ask that you, you reacquaint ourselves with you. We want to reacquaint ourselves with you, oh God. Hallelujah. We want to know your remarkable wonders of your personality. We know you are a wondrous personality. We want to know your personality completely. In that way, Lord, we are sure that we are going to experience the same power that Jesus went through to the, the, the resurrection. Hallelujah. When he shows you his face, you begin to experience the power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. And when you are moving with that power, you know that you are moving with a power that can conquer anything. Hallelujah. That can overcome anything. That is the power that should be active in every believer. Talk to me, hallelujah. That I may share in the fellowship of his suffering by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness, even unto his death, as he did. Hallelujah. You will be conformed into his likeness. You will be transformed to the personality he is. If you know his face, he will reveal to you his hand. So I know we're saying, God, we want to see your hand. But tonight, first, God, we just want to say we want to see your face. Father, thank you for your word to us today. To you be all the glory and the honor and the adoration. We surrender our lives to you, O God. We surrender our lives, O God. We're just saying, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Show us your face tonight. Hallelujah. We, we, we come to you, Lord. We don't seek only just your face, but we seek your hand. We seek your hand, not, not only your hand, O God, but we seek your face rather. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, give us the power to decrease so that you may increase in us. Give us the grace to get out of your way. Have your way in us, O oh God. Lord, we are just saying, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Let's pray that prayer together. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we will see your face tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you open up our eyes, not to see the world more clearly, but to see you, Lord. Somebody declare it. I want to see you, Lord. I just want to see you more clearly, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes, Lord, to see you working around us, working in our lives, working in the lives of our family in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing happens by accident, God. We are in this relationship with you, not by accident. Thank you, Lord, that you orchestrate every single day of our lives and you are, you are causing great things to happen in our lives in the name of Jesus. I want to see you, Lord. Somebody keep on declaring, I want to see you. Allow us to see you, Lord. Allow us to see you, Lord. And we know that we will see your hand in, in, in the mundane and the fantastic things that will happen in our life. As long as we seek your face and as long as we see your face, we know that we will also see your hand, oh God. We have requests, yes, no, Lord, we know. But tonight we just want to say, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come. We are about the kingdom tonight. We are about seeing your face, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
We believe in you, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints of God say amen. Declare it and say amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. I just want to say thank you to everybody. Hi, Minister Judith. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you. We glorify your holy name. Thank you for these ones that have tuned in, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that they will see your hand and they will see your face, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there's nothing that is too hard for you, O oh God. Lord, show yourself to us, Lord. We just want to declare that we love you. We worship you, mighty Jesus. Amen and amen. We want to see you, Lord. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Hallelujah. We will meet each other tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for everybody that tuned in on Facebook and on YouTube. Please make sure that you um, follow follow us on YouTube, especially. Hallelujah. We have been having challenges with the Facebook group, um, uh, the Facebook page, rather. Um, our Facebook page was hijacked and it was stolen. So we are operating more on YouTube. We have started a new page. Hallelujah. But God is in control, hallelujah, because some people don't want to work hard. When we plant, they just want to reap where they've not sown, but it is well. So please make sure you're following Apostle. My name on all social media handles is Fortune L Online. This broadcast for tonight will be on my YouTube channel, Fortune L Online or Fortune Lahuabe. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much, YouTube. Thank you, Facebook. Please uh, join Apostle Mara's new page on Facebook as well. God bless you.